Hey everybody, this is Joshua Greenwood with Alexander Global Media, and this is actually the second part of my how to completely install Interspire from the ground up from A to Z uh, tutorial video. Okay, now in the last video we did the FTP, we installed it onto the server, um, we pretty much did everything. Once the FTP is complete, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your actual website that we set up. In this case, it was InboxSolutions.info. And what you're going to see is you're going to see this. It's going to say Interspire Email Marketer, and it's going to have some information here. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and fill in the blanks. So, for the contact email address, uh, there it's actually blank right here. But uh, what we do is I usually just go ahead and I put contact at... Uh, whatever the name of the domain is. So in this case, it would be contact at inboxsolutions.info. Now, for the administrator username, which is also blank, I usually just put admin uh, because it's just really easy to remember. Now, your password, I mean, you could put whatever you want in that username. I mean, it could be like, for instance, Joshua, for instance, whatever. Okay. Um, choose a password. Okay. Let's see here. Let's put our password in. Password could be whatever you want it to be. Okay, and then it's going to say right here, I want to use a MySQL database, or I want to use a PostSQL database. All right, now, we've already set up the MySQL from the last video, and we did that by simply going into our account under the cPanel right here. And what we did is we went right into right here where it has our account, inboxsolutions.info. We went into the cPanel. We clicked that button. And as soon as we click that button, remember, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see where it says MySQL databases. So once you go ahead and click on that button, then remember from the last video, we've already created the uh, the actual MySQL database. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy this right here where it says database. I'm going to hit control C for copy. And remember, I used client one and client one for everything, for the database and the name. So right here is all you need to copy. So that that's why I do it. I do that for everything when I create the database so that it's really, really easy to remember. So what I do is once I've copied that, I go back to the email marketer and then I'm going to click I want to use a MySQL database and then you're going to click on I have already created a MySQL database and then what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste the uh, that information right here. So database user, you put that in, client1 underscore client1 and then create a pass okay the database password it's the password that you created when you actually created the database and then you're gonna go ahead and click the database name which all you do is basically copy and paste the same exact thing it'll be the exact same identical thing as the user because remember the username and the password were the same so it's client underscore one client under one okay you leave this where it says database host name, local host, and database table prefix. You leave those alone, okay? Don't touch those, and just simply click continue. All right. Now that we have successfully logged in, uh, it, it has our user ID, the password, and all we got to do is click log in now. Now, as you can see, this has not been private labeled yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and private label. It's one of the very first things that I do when I get in here. So for we put in the username. And the password. Go ahead and log in. And what we're going to do is we've logged into the account. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to settings. And we're going to click on private label settings. Now you could put whatever you want in here under the application name. We're going to put powered by Alexander Global Media, the name of my company. So like I said, you could put anything that you want here powered by your 
sheer awesomeness, whatever. Okay, let's see here. Let's put the name of the domain right here in the default HTML footer. And then what we'll do is put the powered by make some little aesthetic changes here and then what we're gonna do is right here the application logo we're gonna go ahead and change that so what we're gonna do is click browse and I actually I have a file folder in my Dropbox with all my banners and everything so we'll go ahead and click on the banner that we want we click open and here is for your favicon and favicons are a really cool thing I mean it's just a little way to personalize your account for me I've got a little American flag but uh, if you want to create a favicon actually let me go ahead and finish this uh, that's all you need to do all you need to do is then click save alright now that we click saved as you could see uh, it's been completely changed as you can see here at the top it says powered by Alexander Global Media right here it has our new banner and the favicon showed up my American flag right here in the corner now if you wanna get a favicon for your website there's a really cool website you can go to it's uh, let's see here um, All right, it's favicon.cc. It's a favicon.ico generator. And pretty much you could just really upload a favicon into this area. And once you've uploaded your picture, you can edit it and then download the favicon. And then so when you want to uh, basically personalize your account, right here, all you got to do is then upload that file. It's going to be a .ico file. So... Uh, once we have went ahead and we have created the private label settings, pretty much almost everything is set up. Really, the only thing that you need to do at this point in time is you need to go ahead and, let's say, create a contact list. And so we're going to go ahead and create a list name. We'll call it... Um, openers and clickers and then you could have the owner's name reply to email bounce email now for the reply to email I usually have a um, an actual different account here like for instance I'll have like a Yahoo account uh, a, like a throwaway account and the reason is is because you don't want everybody to reply to or bounce back to your actual uh, domain because what it's going to do is you're going to create a feedback loop with the bandwidth of the server it's just going to cause a lot of issues so just don't do that create a you know take you five seconds go create a Yahoo account open it up and put it there that way you'll basically filter all that stuff alright now that we've done this I don't know if you can hear that popping in the background. I'm sorry, I'm sitting right by my fireplace. All right. And then once you've created that, uh, created the list, now what we're going to do is we need to go ahead. We're not going to upload that particular list yet. We're going to go ahead and start uploading our suppression database. That's the very, very, very first thing that you want to do. So what we do is we click on contacts and we scroll down here to where it says suppress an email or domain. And then click a up a file you want to upload and then we would find the file and then click save pretty much this is it once you have uploaded that um, you know all your suppression data all the spam traps abuse complaint emails you know everything once you've uploaded all of those then what you want to do is you want to go once you finished that I mean completely finished it then you go back here to contacts and then click on import contacts from a file and then you're gonna click on the name of the file that you want to import into you click next 
and then basically you're going to import you know your email addresses that you want for that particular file once you've done that then really all you need to do is create an email and create an email campaign I mean that's it so I mean you create an email campaign by simply clicking on where it says email campaigns you know create an email campaign and you know you create a HTML text to personally I just you know do a plain text but I mean you could do either or it really doesn't matter it's really just dependent on your preferences how good you want it to look I mean we've got some Mac daddy HTML templates in here so I mean they they've got pretty much every single solitary you know type of template that you can think of I mean look at this this is this is a pretty you know awesome looking template right here it's very very professional you know business like so I, you know this is a template that I use quite often as well so once you've created your email campaign and you've created your subject line I mean really the only thing left to do is schedule your email campaign and to schedule your email campaign you actually need to configure cron which I'm actually glad I just remembered that so we go back to settings and you're gonna click on cron settings right there under settings and what cron settings is going to allow you to do it's gonna allow you to actually schedule your email so you wanna click on yes I want to enable cron support and then what you're gonna do is it says cron command to run and it says code you don't want to change any of that you just simply copy and paste that so we'll hit control C for control copy and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change these down here to one minute instead of being ten minutes we're just gonna put one minute we're gonna go ahead and leave that for the bounce processing at one hour one minute one minute and then one minute and we'll leave the maintenance process disabled so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back into our cPanel remember we're gonna go back into the cPanel of the uh, of the server click on the cPanel button right here for the actual account it's gonna take us right in here and then what you're gonna do is once you get into this section right here of cPanel you're gonna scroll all the way down and you're gonna click on this little thing right here that says cron jobs you click on cron jobs and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down and you're basically right here where it says common settings you're gonna click on every minute and then you're gonna click on the command line and you're gonna simply paste control V into that section the code that was inside your account remember this code right here you're gonna simply copy and paste that right into this section and you click on add new cron job now you have successfully created a cron job that's it all you gotta do is go back into your account and then you click save now once you have saved your cron job now you can actually schedule your email campaigns uh, for any day you want in the future so let's say I wanted to um, you know set up a campaign for next Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning and I've got a meeting that morning and I don't have time to sit there and and manage it and so I just basically put it on autopilot and so I you know create my email campaign I schedule it for nine o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday okay this will basically enable it so that next Tuesday it goes out now before you start emailing and really before you I mean after you can create your email campaign you can upload all your contact lists you can do all that but what you absolutely need to remember is before you ever get started with anything okay you need to contact your server company uh, by really just emailing their support and uh, what you want to do is right here at the name of your domain you want to send them an email that basically says the following go ahead and, and email them and just say um, dear support
Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to put Dear Support. I need the following domains to be set up in the PTR for RDNS ASAP. Okay, and then list whatever domains that you have, okay, that you want to, and make sure that you basically install all of your domains first, okay, and then go ahead and send them this email. Okay, you have to send them this email, and you have to get a confirmation that the RDNS has, in fact, been set up for that particular account. The best way to do that is you can go to uh, a, a website called MX Toolbox, mxtoolbox.com and mxtoolbox.com is an RDNS checker and you can look up even blacklist all you gotta do is just look up the name of the domain and really that's it and it will check up the the RDNS if the RDNS has in fact been set up and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's set up before you send out any emails okay you have to do this before you send out any emails because if you do not set up the RDNS you're pretty much gonna get uh, you know blocked by almost every single ISP in the world uh, and it can be a very quick way to get your uh, IP address or domain blacklisted because they're gonna automatically assume that you are a spammer because a lot of spammers uh, will always uh, mask their RDNS. So that's a reverse DNS. That means that your DNS and the forwarding DNS of the uh, different server or ISP that you're emailing can communicate, you know, properly with one another. And um, basically, it is essential. So make sure that after you've uploaded your suppression databases and you've uploaded your uh, email lists, that you have in fact emailed your support department and uh, told them, you know, I need you to add the following domains to the PTR, you know, for RDNS, and please uh, notify me once this has been completed. So, yeah, at the end here, I would say, uh, please notify, notify me. Please notify me when these changes have been implemented. Okay, that's it. Once you've gotten confirmation, and the RDNS will take probably, I would say about, uh, it takes about 24 hours. So once they've actually set up the RDNS, you need to wait around 24 hours, okay, for the RDNS to completely propagate through the entire internet. Once it is propagated for 24 hours, uh, then you could start sending your emails. So that is it. Uh, if you want to add users or really do anything else with this, you just need to watch our other tutorial videos. But as far as an actual exp explanation of how to set, uh, you know, up the account from A to Z, uh, this is really it. This is all you need to, you know, know how to do. And you know. To add the users and groups, you know, all you got to do is just go up here to, you know, users and groups. And, you know, like in the last video, you're going to create a user group and you create the user group and then you create a user and that's it. So watch my other video if you need a detailed explanation of this because I go over that in my other videos. All right. Well, that's all. I hope that this tutorial has really helped you out as much as I enjoy creating it. So I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And I wish you guys great success on the internet.